Hey Kim Bugs, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell down below so you know if I, every time I post a video, become a Kim Bug. What are you doing? And without further ado, we can hop right into this video. So, today is going to be a different video. Today is going to be an intro, kind of like a little background on everything that I've been telling you guys about the military and the Navy and things of that sort. I know I've been hinting at it and talking about it a bit in my previous videos, but I haven't given you guys a real in-depth video. I told you guys that I wanted to start giving you guys some videos, content around this because um, eventually I will be in the Navy and I want to tell you guys about my whole experience and I'm going to take you guys with me. I want to tell you guys all about my process and things like that in this video. Before I get into that video, I want to talk to you guys about what's going on down below this box so where it says subscribers child we about to be at a thousand subscribers i already see it the more i look at it the more i'm like hmm we're getting a little close i also want to tell you guys that the closer we get to a thousand subscribers is the closer we get to a giveaway i want to do a really 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 big giveaway for my thousand subscribers because i feel like that's a really big milestone so let me know um what you guys think about that your thoughts dm me if you have any ideas for this giveaway all I know, I want to do a big giveaway. I don't know what it consists of. So today is going to be about my experience, my process that I had to do with my officer packet. If you're applying to become an officer or if you're thinking about becoming an officer in the military, specifically in the Navy, and you're having doubts, questions, you want to hear other people's experiences, this is a video for you because... I will be giving you guys more Navy military content. I want to talk to you guys about my whole process and how I got to this point. So, I want to tell you guys about my process, but I don't want it to be like all over the place. It might be all over the place. It's definitely going to be all over the place. So, originally, I started thinking about becoming an officer in the military or just being part of the military because I didn't even know anything about this officer thing but I originally wanted to be a part of the military when I was in college so I was junior year I went to Virginia Tech and I was like dang I really want to like just go into the military I thought it was just the best decision for me at that moment after I graduate and I didn't even know anything about the officer program I was like I, I want to go into the military I thought I had to go on this route, but I don't just because of my credentials that I have, my bachelor's degree. Um, <laughs> all I know is, is in the beginning process, I was feeling very confused. I graduated college and I just decided to, you know, get, uh, get a couple jobs. And like after that, I was like, this is just not for me. Like I got out of college and a lot of people go through post-grad depression. I was kind of going through that aspect about like, hmm, I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I had this degree, but I really don't know what I'm doing with it. And so I was like, um, well, I guess the off the military route is what I need to think heavily on. Originally, I thought I couldn't get into the officer program just because I didn't have a degree. I felt like I didn't have a degree that matched well with any. Because at first, I was doing my own research. I didn't even find a recruiter. But um, I was doing my own research, and I was like, my degree does not match up with any of these. And then that's when my recruiter talked about the surface warfare officer program in the Navy. And I'm able to do that now. A lot of people ask me why did I choose the Navy I chose the Navy because my dad was in the Navy had really good connections in the Navy and so I knew I was gonna get really good recommendation letters that's persuaded majority of my my decision to choose the Navy I could have done Air Force everybody's like why didn't you do Air Force actually some people ask me why I didn't do Army that's the main reason why I chose the Navy because I felt like I had a pretty good shot um, at getting accepted but I'm not gonna lie that that trying to figure it out for yourself as a civilian like it's so hard trying to I I guess because I felt so confused like I didn't really see a whole lot of information out there and so I didn't really know where to start and so I found my recruiter which is pretty easy to get a recruiter and then when I actually went to the recruiter that's when I found out about the program that I'm in now and he told me all about the process that I had to go through 
um, in order to even submit a packet. Go through all the necessary steps in order to submit a packet. And to submit a packet, you gotta have like a whole lot of stuff. You gotta go to maps, you gotta fill out all this medical information, you gotta pass the um, OAR, which is the standard test that they give for everyone to test your knowledge and where you're at, um, which 42 is now the passing requirement like you have to have 42 or you have to go get a waiver if you have a score less than that i scored above 42 thank the lord so didn't have to worry about that i didn't score 42 um the first time though i scored a 40 the first go around and then the second time i did worse because and i want to tell you guys all about that process second time i did worse and then i was like oh crap and mind you, there's only three times that you can pass the OAR. And so your girl was like, well, this is it. I was like, I was praying to God. I was like, God, if this is for me, it will be for me. And I passed and I was like, well, that's a sign that God is telling me that this is for me. But that is not the only struggle that I had during this time period. So I started this whole process. I want to say... It's August right now. It's August 20th, 2022. I started this process. I started thinking about it like heavily after I graduated in like July, maybe. I went to go see a recruiter maybe that August. Yeah, maybe that August. And then from that August to that October, I didn't really initially start the process until October when I took my first OAR test so yeah it's it's been it's been a while and so when I took that first one in October then you had to wait three weeks I think it was three weeks to take another another um shot at the test and then I took another one failed that and then I took the last one in like January sometime <laughs> it was crazy y'all that test was crazy but your girl made it through my recommendation letters came pretty easy you have to do a personal statement which my personal statement was fairly good I, I center my personal statement around my purpose and how that reflects to the Navy and how my skills and my assets can um you know benefit the navy and how the been and now the navy can benefit me i can post my personal statement if you guys would want me to just to give you guys an idea of how i framed my personal statement i'm pretty good at writing writing is my strength and so it's it's easy for me to form a paper so if you guys want some tips and things like that um and like just an example of a personal statement they got accepted let me know I'm not sure when my, like, when the, when the time period where I applied, like, when it actually opened, but I know I contacted my recruiter, and it was just the beginning, so I don't know initially when it opens, but I do know it closed, my application process closed, like, the whole thing for everyone, it closed in April, like, the beginning, the middle of April, and then they reviewed it in May. and No, they reviewed it at the end of April. And then I knew in May. I think that's how it went. I'm sorry if I got that all misconstrued. misconstrued. Maps, maps went terrible. Maps went so terrible for me. It went terrible for me. If you are going through one, it, one piece of advice that I would like to suggest to anyone is if you are applying, make sure... You get your maps and medical information squared away immediately. Don't screw around like I did and wait until February. Was it February? I think it was March. Anywhere near the, the closing date. I think I did February. <clears throat> I submitted my medical because before you go to MEPS, which MEPS is a place that you... I don't know what it stands for. Don't, don't ask me what it stands for. But they basically I examine you, make sure you're good, make sure, you know, they can actually accept you. Um, like, through, like, medical, like, physical, mobility, um, hearing, eyesight, <clears throat> Um, medical history make sure like your medical history is okay and that you can actually you know proceed make sure you're not you know taking no drugs um 
I think that's the basis of maps. Uh, I went to Columbia. Like, I had to take myself to Columbia. So, with enlisted persons, they usually take the enlisted persons to maps. With me, as an officer application, I actually had to physically take myself. Like, I had to take my car. And we got stay. I got um, cooped up in a hotel for that night. It was nice. I had my own room. Um, as an officer candidate, I got my own room. Enlisted persons, they had to team up with a buddy and, you know share a hotel room but for me i didn't have to share a hotel room i got the whole room to myself it was a nice it was a nice suite i had a little meal and um they do serve they do serve meals but i i had already bought my own meal and um i heard the food was good though and uh then i woke up at five o'clock maybe four o'clock that morning i got on the bus well we got we had to get checked out the hotel and then um, we had breakfast and then we got um transported well i didn't get transported they had a bus for the enlisted persons to get on the bus i took myself so i drove behind the truck or behind the bus and we rode into the base um and then we went to this building may i had to make sure i had my birth certificate my social security you know i think it was like my social security my birth I can't remember what I had to bring, but I know I had to bring, like, my, some information with me. I really can't remember what I had to bring, though. And so, I took that. <clears throat> and then, we went into the building. I had to get checked for, like, you know, like stuff, everything. Um, they stripped me down. But originally, when I got to MEPS, the reason why MEPS was so bad for me was that I went to MEPS and they were going through my medical history and they they saw that i had surgery in my mouth i had to have surgery because i had to breathe under and here and somehow some way i don't don't ask me how and um the doctor something went wrong with the information a doctor didn't sign off on something and so they told me that they were supposed to disqualify me when I was there, they was like, oh, we were supposed to deny you from coming. And I was like, dang, I'm glad y'all didn't deny me. Which is another telltale sign of why I feel like this is the direction I'm supposed to take. Because if not, I wouldn't have been able to go through this whole process. Like, there was so many times I was supposed to be denied. I was supposed to have been denied, like, it took, first of all, it took them, like, four weeks for them to accept my medical. Because before you go to MEPS, you have to, like, submit all your medical history and things like that. And I forgot to tell them about some certain things, which I'll get into that as well. But it took them, like, four, like, three, almost a month to accept my paperwork. Mind you, I told you guys, I did this at the last minute. So, <clears throat> I get to MEPS, and they're like, we were supposed to deny you. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad you guys did not deny me because if they would have denied me, I, I wouldn't have been able to submit my packet on time. Literally would not have been where I am right now. And so that's one thing. They get that cleared. And then I go to another lady to talk about like my mental health um, history. And I forgot to tell them that I took Zola for a period of time, which I took it while I was in college because of the overwhelming stress and from track and you know playing sports being a student athlete basically they were like we're gonna have to disqualify you and i'm like what you guys are gonna have to disqualify me and guys if you get disqualified basically you're done and so she's like but i'm gonna put in a waiver for you i'm gonna put in a waiver if you have too much mental health history um pertaining to like depression anxiety things like that the military can deny you i got really nervous i got really scared because i only took zoloft once and um i didn't take it for a long period of time it was only during a certain period of time and a lady vouched for me in the waiver and so i had already finished the whole because you go to her last and so everybody had went to her last mind you while you're there you can't have like your cell phone or anything you have to leave it outside i had finished everything i already had finished my hearing my um urine sample i already finished my um sight test um all that stuff and then she tells me that i'm getting disqualified 
so that was a very 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 like it was just a bad moment for me like it was very bad I just on the way home I was just like it's I had to take out all my piercings like I had lost some of my piercings because I couldn't put my piercings back in because the hole had closed up when I drove back because from where I'm at to Columbia it takes like maybe like an hour and a half two hour drive and so by the time I got back I had to go to my recruiter and get um all my stuff from get like my to sign off on things and things like that and so by the time I get get back I get notified that my waiver got approved because a lot of waivers getting approved during that time which thank the lord it was just so many incidents during MEPS and the whole medical process also my OAR that I was just like dang like there was so many times that I was supposed to get denied I was supposed to get like a no and everything worked out and it was just like crazy because it was the time period that I did all of my packet in was absolutely insane like I can't believe I finished my whole packet because normally people take like months m way more months than I did to finish the packet and like I started in October and it ended in April and so that was only a couple of months and for me to put that packet together and get accepted was insane like even my recruiter was like for you to have completed this whole packet I knew you were determined to finish like I knew you were determined to get your packet submitted and so I was just in this after the packet gets submitted it's just a whole lot of waiting period and during that time I got linked up with some people that also um we're applying to be officers and so like there's this place called air warriors which if you don't know what that is it's a basically a website where everyone like it's just a whole big old forum and it's like so many like discussion pages where you can go and discuss different things that pertain to the military and um it's just it's more than just then i think it's more than just the navy i think like i think it's every everyone but i'm not sure and so like they just talk about everything on there and so if you guys are interested and you um do you want to know more information air warriors is a good website to go to to hear people's stories and things like that about the navy and that really gave me a really um big help and big insight on what i'm getting myself into um and sometimes i think i'm like dang i can't i really cannot believe that i'm really about to join the navy like it's really insane um <laughs> it's insane to me like every time i think about like wow like I'm really about to be in the Navy. With the OAR, the oh, the real trick is to take your time. Like, that's what I didn't realize. Like, the first time I went through it, I was going through blindly because they don't really show you how to prepare for the OAR. Um, it's just kind of like, there you go. Take the test and figure out what's on it. And then from there, go and do whatever and so the first time I took it I took I was pretty confident because I was very close to the minimum score and so I kind of got intimidated that I wasn't going to beat my score which is why I feel like I did terrible the second time but really if I would have just took my time and read the questions instead of rushed through it the second time I definitely rushed through it which is why I feel like I a bad score and so the third time I went through it I did a whole lot better I took my time and I just read the questions I did prepare I prepared like every day like I was studying at work and people were like what are you studying for like you look really stressed out I was very stressed out I was so ready to be over the whole OAR process like I was just like look here if I don't make it by this time by all the study I'm doing then it's just not meant for me you know what I mean like after you do something like and you like put so much effort into it and it's like I really gave everything I everything I could give and if this isn't enough then it's just not meant for me and so that's how I felt about the whole situation I kind of just gave it to God and oh look at me now you know your girl about to be an instant after all that happened um, I waited and waited for about maybe a month, month, I, I want to say it was, no, because I told y'all, they took the board, okay, they, let me look at the calendar, let me get my, let me get my timeline right, because I don't really know exactly 
when I submitted my application but I'm gonna get the exact date because Blum actually texted me my recruiter and told me that he submitted everything okay so I got I got the receipts um so February 15th is when I sent over all my stuff for MIPS um I didn't get a I didn't get a notification until February 28th. March is when, Mar I'm sorry, March is when I had to submit all my applications and everything, my whole packet, basically. And so February 28th was the day that I actually got accepted, but I sent all of my stuff February 8th or February 15th. And so I was like, dang, like, I'm waiting a really long time. Mind you, the application is due, like, March. March 9th is when I sent everything in. So everything got sent in March 9th. And it takes, like, a couple of days just in case, like, um, they need, like, additional information. So that's why you have to submit it, like, 10 days prior to the actual date that, like, you have to submit it in. Because I have to go to somebody else. I had to show them, like, I had to give them, like, a description of, like, any tattoos that I had. I only have one tattoo on my thigh. But be careful of, like, your tattoos and what you get, which is why I'm not getting any more tattoos or piercings until I actually get into the military. March, May 9th is when I found out that I got accepted. So exactly two months from, from March 9th, I found out. So it took me two months of waiting which was crazy because they didn't start reviewing until April, I think. Like the middle, like the end, like the end of April, like maybe like that, almost to that last week in April, that's when they started reviewing. And then May 9th is when I got accepted. Um, and also, um, right now I'm just studying like different, um, officer, enlisted marine ranks there's so many things i have to know and study for i have to know the um like the hymn for the marines and the navy is so much information i have to know that i already have printed out um which air warriors helped me with that a lot of the people in the group chat a lot of my people that i'm going to ocs with will be um will be there I'm in a group chat with them and so we talk and I've been doing a lot of physical um, exercise and things like that. I do have to do a PRT, which is a physical ready, readiness test before I go to OCS. That is scheduled for September 5th and then September 7th I get sworn in and then September 23rd is when I leave out for OCS. So I'm going to get on a plane to Rhode Island on September 23rd and then I'll be there and spend a night for that day and then I'll get checked in to OCS September 24th. So I don't really think I'll have my phone that whole day because I think they take it away from me. And so then September 25th is the actual start date for OCS for me. So with all that being said, I hope I didn't really leave anything out. I tried to like cover as much as I could, um, but I'm pretty excited about this whole process. I'm really, really, really excited about what the future holds i'm really glad i took this career path and hopefully it does me good i want to take you guys along with me but i did want to give you guys and cover you guys with the basics of what i've been through everything i had to do for this process how long it took me um and why i'm doing it i know ocs is going to be rough i won't give you guys another update until like january maybe so like after september when i give you guys like my last lock update video because that'll probably be my last video you guys probably won't see me till january so just let that be known that i'm this one this break is not um it's not my fault okay um they do take my phone and everything at ocs it's almost like boot camp it is boot camp but it's boot camp for officers hopefully that ocs is a fun but learning and developing period of time for me and i hope that i can learn and grow within an av within myself and you know within this life so yeah that and i'm, I'm really excited about this i feel like i'm actually like serving a purpose um in life like i'm not just like out here just wandering just aimlessly 
searching, you know, like I actually feel like I'm doing something that, that actually matters. And so that's why I really, um, I'm really, I'm looking forward to this and I really am excited about this. Um, just solely because, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to like finding a purpose and, you know, being, it, being an impact in this world, basically. And so, yeah. Hope you guys found this informative. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Um, if you have any more questions about my experience, um, just comment down or DM me on my socials. Um, no, I have not experienced anything military wash. I can't wait to give you guys the videos about my process in OCS. I'm so excited about that. I'm definitely, that's my first video I'm making besides my locks because y'all know I have to update you guys on my locks, but yeah guys i'm thinking maybe i should make another channel for lifestyle but i'm not even consistent on this channel so let's hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what you think see you in another video